Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. As you have seen in the title that in this video, I will show you 10 tips and tricks in Pokemon Unite to improve your gameplay. The tips and tricks that I'm going to show you in this video is really important. So if you want to become a better player in Pokemon Unite, make sure to watch the video till the end without skipping any part. Because in this video, I will show you lots of things about Pokemon Unite that most of the player does not know. So let me give you the highlight of this video. Number 1. Tips and tricks for some randomly Pokemon. Number 2. Tips and tricks for the jungling and rotation. Number 3. Tips and tricks for the timer. And number 4. Many more extra tips and tricks. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can get more this type of Unite content. Now, without wasting any time, let's begin the video. Tips and tricks number 1. BEXP Most of the player does not know about this but it is one of the most important information to improve your gameplay. Now you might be wondering that what is the tips and tricks about EXP. Well let me explain it to you very slowly and wisely. Whenever you kill any opposing Pokemon who are higher level than you, you will get extra EXP from them. Let me show you an example what does I exactly mean by this. Right now I'm on a practice mode to explain you in a very simple way. As you can see Scizor is on level 15 and I I'm on level 7, so if I kill Caesar right now, I will get loads of extra EXP. As you can see from level 7 I instantly reach level 9 after killing Caesar because Caesar was much more higher level than me that's why I got lots of extra EXP. Likewise if you are higher level than the opposing Pokemon and if the opposing team kill you they will also get an extra EXP. Now some of you might be wondering that what is the use of this information? Well whenever you see any opposing Pokemon who are higher level than you when you get a proper chance try to kill them so you can level up faster. Likewise if you are higher level than the opposing Pokemon, try not to die by the opposing Pokemon who are lower level than you, because if they manage to kill you, they will also get extra EXP. So that was all about the tips and tricks number 1. Now let's move on to the next. Tips and tricks number 2, the score alert. The score alert is one of the most important information in this game. The score alert can help you to change the way you are playing this game. By seeing the score alert, you can decide whether you have to defend the goal zone or to score. So let me explain it to you how the score alert exactly works. Because I believe that most of the player does not know about this. So typically there are 5 type of score alert in Pokemon Unite. Like we are in the lead, we have a huge lead, it's a close battle, we are struggling to keep it up and we are really struggling. These are the 5 score alert which are shown in the Pokemon Unite. And these score alert will be show up in 5 minute, 3 minute, 2 minute and 1 minute mark of this game. So basically we are in the lead means that your team is winning by 21 to 99 points. Likewise we have a huge lead means that your team is winning by above 100 points. And it's a close battle means that there is a difference of 20 or less than 20 points between your team and opposing team. We are struggling to keep up means that your team is losing by between 21 to 99 points. We are really struggling means that your team is losing by above 100 points. Now some of you might be asking that what are the uses of this information. Well let me explain it to you how you can use this information to improve your game sense. As I have mentioned earlier that these information are useful to make decision whether you have to defend the goal zone or to score. The score alert is not really useful in the mid game but in the final stretch score alert is one of the most important information that you must have. The score alert will help you to make the decision whether you have to defend the Rayquaza or fight for the Rayquaza. Like if in the final stretch the score alert shows you we are really struggling or we are struggling to keep it up, you should definitely fight for the Rayquaza and try to secure the Rayquaza. Because at that time only Rayquaza can help you to win the match. Likewise if the score alert says we are in the lead or we have a huge lead, at that time try to defend the Rayquaza. I have seen lots of the player making mistake trying to melt down the Rayquaza even if they have a huge lead don't be a police and stupid players like them because if you try to melt the Rayquaza there is a chance that enemy might also steal the Rayquaza so if they steal the Rayquaza definitely you gonna lose and if the score alert says it's a close battle then at that time I would definitely recommend you to fight for the Rayquaza this was all about tips and tricks number two now let's move on to the next one 
Tips and tricks number 3, the sneak peek in bushes. This trick is more likely to be a glitch in Pokemon Unite. I don't know whether you know about this or not. You can still be hidden in the bush by barely touching it. As you can see, I just slightly touched the bush but still I'm hidden. I don't know whether it is a glitch or not, but this works almost on all the bushes. Now, some of you might be thinking that even if it is a glitch, then what is the use of this thing? Well, you can use this trick in order to get little bit of advantage in the battlefield, like to get a little bit bit of extra vision while hiding on the bush because most of the time player stay in the middle of the bush in order to be hidden so at that time they get little bit of less vision in certain area but now you know you can be hidden by staying in the tip of the bush now don't think that this is a very small information or it is a very small trick because no information is small it's totally depend upon the players how they utilize this kind of information and to be honest it is a really good trick in order to stay hidden in the bush and get extra vision on the enemy that was all about the tips and tricks number three now let's move on to the next one tips and tricks number four the liquidation of karate boy ursifu Now lots of you might be thinking that what could be the tips and tricks about the liquidation of Ursipu. I don't know whether you know about this or not. Ursipu do true damage to the opposing Pokemon with liquidation. A true damage is a kind of damage which ignores all the shield and the defense of the opposing Pokemon. The tips and tricks about the liquidation of Ursipu is that while using the liquidation you can stop the scoring of the opposing Pokemon even if they have the Rayquaza shield. Let me show you an example what does I exactly mean by that. As you can see right now I have a Rayquaza shield and opposing Ursipu is using liquidation so if I try to score right now he can easily stop me watch this So next time when you are using liquidation while playing Ursipu remember that you can stop the scoring of the opposing Pokemon even if they have the Rayquaza shield. Likewise if there is Ursipu in the opposing Pokemon and if you have the Rayquaza shield don't try to score in the goal zone where there is Ursipu. Always try to avoid the goal zone where there is Ursipu especially when you have the Rayquaza shield. And that was all about tips and tricks number 4. Now let's move on to the next one. Tips and tricks number 5, the lock mode in Pokemon Unite. I know that lots of the player might know about this, but there will be some player who does not use this feature. The lock mode setting is one of the most important settings that you must turn on and utilize the advantage of it. As we all know that the lock mode feature will help you to target any specific Pokemon, especially when you are using a damage dealer Pokemon, which mostly depends upon dealing damage with basic attack. For example, Cinderace, Decidueye, Dragapult, and many more Pokemon. But but did you know that when you are using this lock mode feature, you just have to tap on this icon in order to do basic attack. That is why it is one of the most convenient and easy way to target any specific Pokemon, especially when you are using a Pokemon which totally relies on dealing damage with basic attack. So next time don't forget to turn on this feature. Tips and tricks number 6. Know the passive ability of Pokemon. It is one of the most important thing that you must know about the Pokemon in order to take advantage or to counter the enemy. Let me explain you why it is very important to know about the passive abilities of Pokemon. Because most of the player does not know or does not even try to know about the passive abilities. But I won't be explaining the passive abilities of all the Pokemon. I, I will, will be explaining the passive of only 3 Pokemon. So let's begin with the EV which is Glaceon. The passive ability of Glaceon is called Runaway. When this passive is activated, Glaceon is immune to any kind of hindrance effect and become invisible for one second. When you have this passive, you can play very aggressively with Glaceon. This is the advantage you get with this passive. As you can see in this clip, I totally immune the Unite move of Blastoise. But if you want to counter the passive abilities of Glaceon, just use any kind of slow effect on Glaceon and the passive ability of Glaceon will get activated. At that time, you can use any big moves on Glaceon like the Unite move of Blastoise or the Gardevoir. Now let's talk about the passive ability of Wigglytuff which is called Q Charm. This passive of Wigglytuff get activated when she is hit by any opposing Pokemon at close range. If the passive ability of Wigglytuff gets activated, the opposing Pokemon will come towards the Wigglytuff without their willingness. And if you want to counter the passive of Wigglytuff, you just have to attack her by maintaining a distance. These are the reasons that you should also know how the passive ability of pokemon works 
Tips and tricks number 7. Let the Rejiliki enter in the goal zone. What I mean by let the Rejiliki enter the goal zone is, when your goal zone have 20 or less than 20 score to be dunk, at that time let the Rejiliki enter the goal zone, so that Rejiliki can automatically destroy the goal zone. Because if the Rejiliki destroy the goal zone by himself, the overdunk will be very less or zero. As you can see, in this goal zone there is only 20 score to be dunk. If I let the Rejiliki enter in the goal zone right now, he will totally destroy it and the overdunk will be zero likewise when you kill the rejiliki and if that time enemy goal zone has 20 or less than 20 to be score make sure to destroy it before the rejiliki enters there or else even if you destroy the goal zone of the enemy your overdunk score will be very less Tips and tricks number 8. Know about the buffs in Pokemon Unite. It is one of the most essential information that you must have in order to improve your gameplay in Pokemon Unite. Especially when you are playing as a jungler role. You must know when the buffs and the important objective spawn or get respawn in Pokemon Unite. So let me give you the highlight of some important objectives and their spawn and respawn time. Make sure to remember these things. The bottom lane Reggie will spawn for the first time at 7 minute mark and when you kill it it will respawn spawn after 1 minute. Same goes for the top lane Regiliki. The top lane and the bottom lane Alteria which you may also call as Beast. It spawn for the first time at 8 minute 50 second and get respawn at 7 minute 20 second, 5 minute 50 second and so on. The Alteria of the central area spawn for the first time at 8 minute mark and get respawn after 90 second each time you kill it. The Selgor and Escavalier spawn for the first time at 9 minute and 40 second and it get respawn after 1 minute it each time you kill it. Try to remember all these things because it is one of the most important information that you must have, especially when you are playing as a jungler. Tips and tricks number 9. Utilize the goal zone. Most of the player does not know that the outer goal zone, the middle goal zone and the base goal zone has different healing capacities. Let me explain you how does it exactly works so that you can utilize it properly in the battlefield. The outer goal zone gives you 10% shield of max HP and heals you 200 HP every 1.5 second. The middle goal zone gives you 15% shield of max HP and heals you 500 HP every 1.5 second. The base goal zone gives you 25% shield of max HP and heals you 800 HP every 1.5 second. Now you know how the goal zone exactly works. So remember that it will be little bit easy to fight the opposing team in the outer goal zone and it will be little bit difficult to fight the opposing team in the middle goal zone and it will be quite hard to fight the opposing team in the base goal zone. This is why you should know the detail of even these small things. Tips and tricks number 10. Ban the correct Pokemon in draft pick. To make the game little bit easier for you, you should always try to use your brain in the draft pick while picking and banning any Pokemon. Let me give you one example. If you want to pick any kind of Pokemon which uses lots of dash moves, for example Zorark, Absol and Scizor, at that time always try to ban Clipable. Because by using gravity, Clipable can counter any kind of Pokemon which uses dash moves. And in this match, I will ban Clipable because I want to use Zorark so that enemy does not pick Clipable and counter Zorark. Likewise if enemy team has lots of dash Pokemon at that time pick Clipable and use gravity to counter them. And this was all about 10 tips and tricks in Pokemon Unite. By the way I'm thinking about creating a guide video on draft pick. Let me know in the comment section whether I should make it or not. So that's it for today guys and if this video was helpful for you please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.